Hello, I'm Kayla, a 36-year-old woman. The past few months have been really tough for me, and I'm having to relearn a lot of things. My husband, Tom, caused a lot of the trouble I'm in, but a kind person stepped in and helped me avoid even more pain. First, let me tell you about the people in my story. The first person is my sister, Maya. She's six years younger than me and very pretty. Growing up, we didn't get along because I was a nerd and she was popular. She always picked on me and seemed jealous for some reason. My mom tried to help us get along, but it didn't really work. When I went to college, we didn't talk much. But after I graduated and she was a teenager, we started talking again. Our relationship got a little better, but we never got really close. That was the best we could do, and I was okay with that. Next, uh, let me tell you about my ex-husband, Tom. We met at work and got along really well. We dated for about three years before getting married. We worked hard and bought our first house together. I earned more money, so the mortgage and deed were in my name. After two years of marriage, Tom asked me about having children. Honey, I was wondering about something, and I need you to think about this with an open mind. All right, what is it? I've been thinking that we've been together for a while now, and maybe we could start a family of our own. You know how I feel about that. I know, but we have the money for it, and it would be really cute to have little versions of us running around, don't you think? Yeah, the kids are a lot of work and responsibility. We're the most hardworking and responsible people we know. Come on, give it some thought. Okay, I promise I'll help take care of them. Just keep that in mind, okay? Even though I wasn't keen on having kids, I gave in because Tom kept bringing it up. First, we had a son, and three years later, we had a daughter. Initially, Tom was very helpful, but that quickly changed. Suddenly, I was responsible for everything at home, including the kids. After our first child, Tom insisted I stop working because he had gotten a promotion and was earning more than me. I tried to resist, but eventually, I decided it wasn't worth the fight and accepted my new role. To avoid getting bored at home, I took up a new hobby, hosting dinners. I often invited my mom and sister, who lived nearby, and my mother-in-law, Megan, whenever she was in town. Eventually, I started to feel comfortable in my new life. I got to spend a lot of time with my family, and that made me happy. Tom and I were doing okay. I had gone through some trauma after giving birth to our second child, where I almost died, which affected our relationship. I didn't think anything else was wrong, but oh, how wrong I was. As I was cleaning my room, I found a pair of panties that definitely weren't mine. My heart sank as I stared at them, wondering if I wasn't enough for my husband. I had been feeling different lately, but I had just had our second child. It hadn't been over a year since then, and I was still recovering. I had been going to therapy, making slow progress, but it didn't seem enough because Tom was cheating on me. Once the shock wore off, I was filled with anger and betrayal. I needed to know who my husband was cheating on me with and why. First, I sent Tom a picture of the underwear and asked him who they were. Then I checked his laptop. I logged into his social media accounts and went through his chats. At first, I didn't see any unknown women, which confused me more. I looked through his messages, but found nothing. In my desperation, I went through every chat, even though I knew it was foolish because everyone in his contacts was someone. I couldn't believe that anyone in my life could hurt me that much. Then I realized that my sister's contact ID was everywhere. I looked at first, I didn't think much of it because why would my sister and husband talking be suspicious? But when I checked their chats, I felt sick to my stomach. They were full of pictures and videos of them in bed, messages about how much they love each other, and plans for Tom to leave me. I couldn't believe my own sister would do something so awful. Our relationship had never been perfect, but this was a whole new level of betrayal. 
First, I threw up because I was so disgusted. Then I tried calling Tom, but he didn't answer, so I called my sister, Maya. Hey, what's up? Don't hey, what's up me? Seriously, what's wrong with you? I don't know about mine, but I do know that I found a pair of your panties in my bedroom. Have you been sleeping with Tom? Yeah, for a while now. Why, Maya? Seriously, you thought it was okay to sleep with my husband because you thought I was boring. And being my sister didn't even stop you. Look if I thought I was helping you out. I was keeping Tom busy so you could focus on the kids. Are you serious? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Look, we didn't mean for it to go this far, okay? I only did it because he kept hitting on me, and he's a nice guy. But he was my husband. Why would you help tear our family apart? I just want what's best for Tom, okay? If I'm the best for him, then so be it. You're disgusting. I hung up, unable to believe her nerve. I just lay in bed and cried. I never thought my life would come to this. Eventually, my youngest woke up crying, so I tended to her. I felt empty as I went through the motions of the day. I couldn't let my kids know something was wrong. They didn't need that worry. I picked up my older child from school, made dinner, and when they asked where their dad was, I lied and said he was working late. At some point, my anger turned into worry. It was almost 11 o'clock at night, and Tom still wasn't home. I tried calling him multiple times, but he didn't answer. I even tried calling my sister to see if he was there, but she didn't pick up either. Exhausted from the day, I went to bed, hoping it was all just a bad dream. The next morning, I woke up feeling like something was wrong. I looked around and realized Tom's things were gone from the room. I checked the cupboards and drawers, and most of his stuff was gone from the house too. He had left while I was asleep without saying a word. I couldn't believe it. He just left me without even trying to talk. I didn't know what to do. All I could think about was taking care of my kids first, then I'd figure out everything else. I woke up, got the kids ready, dropped off the oldest at school, and then took the youngest to my mom's place. She could tell something was off because I was distant. All I could think about was how I'd managed to raise two kids alone. Whenever I came back to reality, I remembered I had to tell my mom about my sister and husband. Eventually, she couldn't wait any longer and asked what was wrong. Okay, I've had enough of your silence. What's going on? I don't know how to say this. Why don't you start from the beginning? Well, I found out that Tom has been cheating on me. What? How do you know? I found another woman's underwear in our room. When I asked Tom about it, he didn't answer and then left. He left. What do you mean? When I woke up this morning, all his things were gone. Gone. You didn't try to stop him. I didn't even realize when he came back. I fell asleep around midnight, and when I woke up, all his stuff was gone. Oh my God, my poor girl. I'm so sorry this happened. Yeah, it gets worse. Oh no, what happened? Do you know who Tom cheated on you with? You mean you know who he cheated with? Yeah, I snooped through his things to find out. I wouldn't have tolerated this under normal circumstances, but this is different. So who is it? Maya. Excuse me, what, are you serious? Yeah, my husband has been cheating on me with my own sister. I called her to ask about it, and she was so casual about it. She said they were in love, and she believed she was the best for him, so she was going to keep being with him. Oh my God, what has Maya done? I don't even know how I'm going to survive. I have two kids to raise, and I need to find a job too. Why don't we just get some rest while I try to process this? I'll be here to help you, okay? Yeah, okay. Thanks, Mom. I had become numb to everything that had happened, so telling my mom wasn't as hard as I thought. I ended up sleeping while my mom took care of my youngest. When I woke up, I heard my baby crying and my mom yelling. 
I rushed out and saw my mom on the phone, looking angry. She hung up and seemed surprised to see me. She apologized for the noise, but didn't say more. I knew she had been giving Maya a piece of her mind. Over the next few days, mom stayed with us. It was easier having one person move than three. Maya kept trying to contact our mom, but she asked me to block Maya. It was comforting to have someone understand my feelings when I felt so alone. I found out through mutual friends that Tom and Maya got married. They reached out to me, concerned and confused. I had to explain everything, which was humiliating, but they were supportive. They all blocked Tom and Maya and refused to associate with them. But I found out they got married the day after Tom left us. It hurt to know, but I shouldn't have expected anything different from them. When I told my mom, she was furious. You should know my mom is usually calm, so seeing her so angry with my sister was surprising. It was great to have her financial support. She wasn't obligated to help, but she did her best for us. She even helped me get job interviews because I wanted to contribute now that Tom wasn't there to stop me. Taking care of the kids was manageable, but when they asked about Tom, I had to hold back tears. Still, we got through it. A week later, I got a letter from Tom. I didn't want anything to do with it. I figured it was some apology, but I was done with him. A week was too long to try to fix things, especially after he ran away from his family. So I did the next best thing I could think of. I burned the letter. But afterward, I couldn't help but be curious about what it said. Sometimes I wished I had read it before burning it, but then I reminded myself that nothing he could have said would change how I felt about him and what he did. The next day, my mom and I took the kids to the fair. We had a blast, and it was nice to be in a lively place after everything. I finally got to have fun and laugh, which felt great after such a tough time. That night, my mom and I relaxed with a bottle of wine, and I told her about the letter. So, something came in the mail for me last night. Oh, what was it? It was a letter from Tom. What? What did it say? I don't know. What do you mean? You opened it, right? No, I didn't want to deal with anything he had to say, so I burned it. You burned it? Cow, what if they were official divorce papers? The envelope didn't look legal at all. I'm sure it wasn't that. Well, if you're sure, what do you think was in it? I don't know. Maybe a weak apology or a request for his stuff back. I wouldn't be surprised. But how are you feeling about all of this now? Well, today was a good day. It's tough, especially when the kids keep asking where their dad is. What do I even tell them? It's slowly getting better, but only a little. As long as it's improving, I'm always here for you. And just so you know, I'm planning to cut ties with your sister. Everything I have will go to you and the kids. Oh, mom, that means a lot, but are you sure? Maya is still your daughter. I know you and Maya had your differences, but what she did is unforgivable. I raised both of you better than this, and Maya clearly didn't care. So she's no longer my daughter. I would have been upset if mom changed her mind easily, but I knew Maya was still her child. I couldn't imagine how hard it must have been for mom to make that decision because I could never do that to my kids. It made me even more grateful to have someone so supportive. Another three days passed, and I heard a knock on the door. It was strange because I wasn't expecting anyone, and besides my mom, who was at work, no one ever visited. I opened the door cautiously and saw two men in black suits. I only opened the door a little and asked who they were. They said they were lawyers and had something for me. They handed me a note and then a check. It was made out to me, and it was for $750,000. My jaw dropped. I tried to tell them there must be a mistake, but they said there wasn't an urge me to read the note. The note began with, thank you for saving me. As I read on, I realized the money was from my mother-in-law, Megan. She explained that she had visited us three days ago 
but no one was home. She called Tom, who tried to make it seem like he couldn't get in, but I had changed the locks after he left. Megan said something was wrong with Tom's behavior and pressed him until he confessed everything. She was disgusted by his actions. Megan felt sorry for what I had gone through and decided to leave all her inheritance to me and her grandkids. She thanked me for preventing her from making a mistake and for not trusting her son with her assets. That's what the check was for. The lawyers then told me that Megan had been terminally ill and had passed away just the day before. She wanted me to have the money right after her death to ensure her daughter-in-law and grandkids were well taken care of. Tears filled my eyes at Megan's kindness and loss. She was truly remarkable, always standing up for what was right. It was one of the reasons Tom had always been afraid of her, yet I found her comforting. She stayed true to her word and supported me. Until her last breath, a few days later, Tom called. I already knew what he was going to say, but I decided to hear him out. What did you do? What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean, Tom. You'll have to be more specific. What are you talking about? Why weren't you home that day? I specifically asked you to be. I sent you a letter asking you to pretend everything was normal while my mom visited. Oh, was that what the letter said? You didn't read it. No, I burned it. You betrayed me. My mother was going to help me with the inheritance, but you took it all because you're selfish. That's ironic coming from you. You abandoned your family and only cared about contacting me when it involved your inheritance. Love can't be forced. I did what was best for me, and your mother did what was best for us. Don't ever try to contact me or the kids again. Goodbye. After that, things moved quickly. I filed for divorce and was granted full custody of the kids. Tom tried to fight for the inheritance, but Megan had made it clear that I was the one to receive it so he didn't succeed. Tom and Maya tried to pressure me into giving them some of the money, but I stood my ground and refused. Life has become easier since we got the money. I put a portion aside for my kids' college and invested the rest. My mom could retire and I started working. My kids have come to terms with their dad not coming back, and when they're older, I'll tell them everything. I'm still hurting, but I know things can only get better from here.